All right, welcome back, everybody. Hi, my name is Jill from Go English Coach. Um, we have class two of our advanced grammar class today, advanced grammar two. Um, so let's get started. In our class yesterday, we discussed uh, present perfect, and we kind of had started in class one looking at present perfect and present per perfect progressive. So um, and now I'm just kind of taking, um, now I'm just kind of taking a little bit of a step back and making sure we've got a full great foundation in this present perfect tense. So taking a look at what we have here, this is just a review. Oh, let's, let's look at here. So, um, we're going to just kind of review what we did yesterday quickly. Um, and then looking at how to form this tense, um, in the negative form. And then also looking at questions, and then we've got some work in our book to work on. All right, so let's jump in. All right, so what we have here um, for our formula, right, we've got subject, so I, she, the dogs, the company, you know, any subject is always our first part. The next part of this equation has, um, you have two choices, has or have. We talked about that in our last class. So if you missed it or you need to review, please go back in the calendar and just take a look at that class. And then the participle. What is the participle? It is a form of the verb that we use in this tense. So um, it is well worth your time to study the participles, and especially for the irregular verbs, okay? Great. So we now have two examples I've got here. I have known her for years, for years, for years, okay? So we're looking at these two kind of distinctions between these sentences. Um, and the second example is she has driven that car since 2020, okay? So in our class yesterday, we discussed the differences in when we use for and when we use since. Now, if you remember, I hope that you do, um, we use for in the present perfect to discuss a period of time, a period of time. So we say for and since, for and since. Since is one point in time, okay? So you can say, I've known her since I was young. Um, and, and that's then using um, also in there the past tense as well. So, and we talked a little bit about that yesterday too. Let's take a look at how we make the present perfect in a negative form, okay? So if we use these two sentences as examples, um, we're looking at what does the, what does this, equation change to okay so if this is equation for this one for the positive what does it look like for the negative okay so um she has not driven that car since 2020 okay so let's make our we've got our subject plus has or have plus not and then kind of the rest of your sentence, okay? So the subject, we're just using S, have or has, and then, oh, nope, we did forget a part, I'm sorry. Not plus the participle, okay? Simple, it's a long word, okay. <laughs> okay, so that is our uh, formula, okay? Now, let's do, let's convert, let's change this sentence to this sentence and this sentence to negative. So I have known her for years. Let's apply this formula and see what we get. So we've got I have um, not, um, I have not known, yep, just making sure I've got everything right, her for years. Okay, I have not known her for years. You might want to, you know, in that scenario, you might want to give a little bit more information. I've not known her for years. It's more like I haven't known her very long. Um, okay, but just for the sake of this activity, 
let's just keep it like all in the same structure, okay? So we're, we're putting in the not in between the have has and the participle. So she has not driven that to. <laughs> okay. Just slow down a little bit, Jill. That, okay, car since 2020, okay? She has not driven that car since 2020, meaning the car has been sitting there, she hasn't driven it. That's kind of what that sentence is saying, okay? Um, great, so the next piece, so that's fairly easy, right? That's fairly easy, you're just inputting um, you're inputting the word not into the sentence um, in between have, has, and the participle. I have not known her for years. She has not driven that car since 2020, okay? What, we're, what, what I'd like to talk about here is also, as we always have to talk about in English, are the contractions, right? So what are our contractions here? Okay, and remember, contractions are a completely um, normal part of the English language. So it does not mean it is more formal, and it does not mean it's more casual. It's a natural part of written and spoken English, okay? So feel free to use these. Um, the only time I would say to not use a lot of contractions are in like very, very formal um, parts of, you know, like writing. So for example, if you are, you know, not really emails, but I'm saying if you're writing like a professional article or a paper um, for maybe you're in college or you're working on your degree, um, you know, in those scenarios, I would not use contractions just because that's part of that real high level formality and formal writing, okay? But in even in professional emails and, um, you know, really any anywhere you can use contractions in, in written and spoken English. All right, so we've got the two have not, okay? And then we've got has not. Now, if you've been, since you guys are advanced level students, I'm sure you're pretty aware of how this works. We combine them and we've got haven't and hasn't, okay? Haven't and hasn't, hasn't, okay? So let's look at the pronunciation of those words. We've got ha, Okay, haven't, haven't, and as there's a small like eh sound in between z and hasn't, hasn't, it's very small, very short, we don't exaggerate it, that sound, the if sound is literally never exaggerated, because it's a very short, small, relaxed sound. Um, so just get comfortable using those. I haven't known her for years. She hasn't driven that car since 2020. Okay, I haven't known her for years. She hasn't driven that car since 2020. Okay. All right. Let's put these contractions over here because we're going to use them again. Haven't and hasn't. All right. Now, let's take a look at how we create the next part, which is questions. Okay, so let's look at how we form the question. What's the formula for the question? So has she driven that car since? So we switch the order here. Okay, so we move the have and has to the beginning then the subject plus the participle, okay? All right, so that's our new formula. You guys got it? 
I hope you guys are taking notes because I really think that's an important part. You know, um, part of, sorry, there's all these notes. I have this set up. <laughs> okay. Anyways, part of what, what I was going to say is part of learning something is, you know, and I've said this in other classes, so my apologies for repeating myself, but that's kind of my job. Um, uh, part of the learning process is learning about how you learn. And so if you're a person that, you know, really needs to have um, you know, repetition, or maybe you listen really well, or maybe you have to see it written. I'm a person that needs to like write it down and have some physical action around the learning. And so for me, when I'm watching a video or listening to something, I'm always just writing. It just kind of helps me to process it. Um, and I understand that that is not everybody's um, way of processing things. So just kind of keeping in mind that everybody has their own process with this. Excuse me. Okay, so to, let's make these questions. So let's starting starting with these two here. Let's change the order and make them um, into questions. So if we've got I have known her for years, it's now going to be Have I known known her for years? Okay. Sometimes when you take these sentences and switch them, it's kind of like, well, would I really ever? ask that question it's kind of strange so when we look at some of the exercise when we look at some of the exercises together you know then you'll see like oh okay this makes a little bit more sense so we're just sticking with this so we've got you can see the patterns essentially here okay um okay has she has she driven um that car since 2020. Okay. Has she driven that car since 2020? Great. So it's just, just a simple process of just changing the order. Okay. Very simple. Um, the next part that I'd like to talk about is how do we answer these questions? So have I known her for, for years? Yes, I have. And we do not, we do not make attraction, no contraction here on the positive, on the yes, okay? Yes, I have, and no, I haven't. You can contract this, you can. Here, you can't, can't, okay? All right, um, has she driven, um, sorry, has she driven that car since 2020? Yes, what's the response for yes? She has. Or no, she hasn't. Okay, easy. Just using our, um, we're using our contractions here in the negative, but not in the positive. Okay. Okay, let's take a minute here and go over to the desk and do a couple of practice exercises here. And we're also going to look at um, this page 86, which we did in our class yesterday. All right, you guys, the book we're using today is this Fundamentals of English Grammar. So I've copied a couple of things out of that book for us to work on here today, just to give proper credit to the book. Let's just do our review from page 86, which was a, for homework that I asked you to do for yesterday. So in exercise nine here, we were looking at... Um, what are we looking at? It says complete the sentences with the correct form of the parentheses, put brackets. That's what those little, these little lines are called brackets, okay? Around the since clauses, the since clause. So just kind of reminding ourselves that a clause is just kind of a part of a sentence, okay? So let's see, here we did Pedro has changed his major three times since he started school. And then we put this bracket here um, as they instructed in the instructions there, okay? Okay, so ever since I be a child, I blank afraid of snakes. Ever since I was a child, okay? I have been afraid of snakes. Now let's talk about this very quickly. So we've got 
a mix here of simple past, right? And then um, present perfect. Okay, so in the in the in here, so it's called present perfect, right? But it's something that started in the past and continues today. So this person who is speaking is saying, I started being afraid of snakes in the past and it continues to today. So he's referencing something that started in the past and is the same today. So ever since I was a child, I have been afraid of snakes. Okay. This would be actually a great exercise if you could create some of these sentences. Maybe we can do this. Um, let's make a couple of sentences after we're done with this here, and then I'll share that with you guys, okay? Okay, I can't wait to get home to my own bed. I sleep not well since I leave home three days ago. Okay, so we know this is something that happened one time, so we're going to put that there. It's a simple past, okay? I can't wait to get home to my own bed. I haven't slept, okay? I haven't slept well since I left home three days ago, all right? All right, number five, ever since Pete, and the verb is meet, Nicole, he, think, comma, not, blank about anything or anyone else he's in love okay ever since so to meet somebody is a one-time thing right we just say that in the simple past so ever since pete met nicole okay he uh hasn't because it's negative thought that's the participle for think he hasn't thought about anything else or, or anything or anyone else he's in love. Auto um, blank had a lot of car uh, problems with his car ever since he blank buying it ever since he. Okay, it's a lemon. We'll talk about what that means. In it. Well, let's talk about it right now. So a lemon, if you actually it gives you the two little ass like stars here so a lemon means a car with a lot of problems i have no idea why we have that but that's what they call if you buy a car and you're like oh man this car is in terrible condition you would say i bought a lemon okay um so so let's say auto okay so I mean, even if you start backwards here, because you've got, oh, we haven't been putting these clauses in here. Let's go back really quickly. Ever since I was a child, notice that when the clause, the since clause is in the beginning, we need a comma. When it's at the end, we don't need a comma, okay? Ever since I was a child, comma, I have been afraid of snakes. All right, I can't wait, get to, my, I can't wait to get home to my own bed. I haven't slept well. And then here we go, since I left home three days ago, okay? Um, here again, look, we've got the ever since, and we're gonna put a thing there, uh, the brackets, okay? And then if you notice since the, since the since clause is in the beginning, we need to use a comma right here to separate those two clauses, okay? But when the since clause is at the end, we do not need a comma. Since clause beginning, yes, comma. Since clause at the end, no comma. Okay, so ever since Pete met Nicole, he hasn't thought about anyone or anything else. He's in love. Okay. Um, so here we've got the since clause over here. So since he bought it, we're going to say that when you buy something, it's like a one-time singular point thing. So that's just simple past, okay? Ever since he bought it. So let's go back. Otto has had a lot of problems with this car ever since he bought it. It's a lemon, okay? So has had means, again, it started in the past and continues. So he still today has problems with this car, okay? Um, okay, the last one looks like it's got two, like a question and an answer. So A and B, what blank, let's see, you eat since you get up this morning, what? So here's our clause. 
So we're going to use the past tense here because it's, we only get up at one time, right? So since you got up, that's the past tense for get is got. What, let's use the present perfect here. What have, and remember this is a, oh geez, that's not working well. Okay, what have, this is a question. So we've got, we've got the things are kind of organized, right? So you take the subject and you move it in the middle, right? What have you eaten since you got up this morning? Okay, what have you eaten since you got up this morning? So far, I have eaten a banana and some yogurt. Let's look at what these three stars here means. What does that mean? So we look at the bottom of the page. It says so far plus a present perfect tense expresses situations that began in the past and continue to the present. So what he's saying, the reason that this is past perfect or excuse me, present perfect is because of this where we have so far, which means it's not complete, right? So He's going to eat more throughout the day. But so far, it's kind of like a time check. Like I started earlier in the past. And in this moment, I have eaten this, this, and this. But he plans to eat more, right? That's what the so far, that part of it, that's what this part kind of suggests, is that there's more coming. <laughs> but this is kind of the one-time check-in, okay? Great. So that was your homework from last time. Let's look at let's see, some ex, um, ex, uh, exercises to work on with a partner. If you can find, hopefully you can find a partner. Okay. Um, so this is just kind of up here is this grammar part, the grammar presentation. So this bottom part, you're looking at these conversations and we're going to complete the conversations using the present tense form of the verb that they give you in parentheses. So this is a parentheses that is different from a bracket. This is parentheses. Can you read me? Okay. Parentheses. Okay. Are like this. And these are brackets. Oops, that is not a bracket, that's a parentheses. Okay, awesome. Okay, let's see. Um, a, you, so we've got a couple words here. You eat ever an insect. And they made, have you ever eaten an insect? Gross. No, I haven't. I eat never, have never eaten an insect. Okay, so take a minute, you guys, and see if you can pause this and kind of just work on this on your own. All right, let's see how you guys did. So we've got three words here, you stay ever. So these are questions. Okay, so have, we know it's have because it's you. You ever stayed. So this is the participle for the word stay, which is not irregular. So it's a regular verb, which is simply the participle means then. It's just the past tense form with ed, okay? Have you ever stayed in a room on the top floor of a hotel? And the answer, yes, I have. I stayed in a room on the top floor of a hotel a few times. So they're giving more information. You know, these are questions. Um, this type of question is called a yes, no question. So simply you can just say yes or no. Um, or you can offer more information with your answer. So it just depends on if you want to give more information, if you feel like more information is necessary. So, um, okay. Okay. Uh, great. So number three, so we've got you meet ever. Have you ever is uh, a very typical kind of question. Have you ever is kind of like ever in your life, in your whole life, have you ever? Okay. So it's, um, it's, it's a, it's a good question for you to practice. Okay. Especially if you're maybe interviewing somebody or if you're being interviewed, um, 
Okay, so I have you ever, let's see, have you ever met a movie star? Have you ever met a movie star? Okay, great question. No, I haven't. I've, let's use the contraction here. I've never met a movie star. Or you could say I, so remember, there's always two ways to make a contraction. We didn't do that up here. Um, Cause what we have is yes, I have, no, I haven't. Um, or you can say I've never, but, and because they gave us never here, we can just say, we move the contraction I have to I've never met. Okay. You could always just say I have never met and that's totally fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Last one here. Ted travel ever blank overseas. That's a question. Has, so we're going to, so we know that it's the third person because it's Ted. Okay. So has Ted. So we have the, the form of the question is first, it is the form of have has, then your subject, which is Ted. So has Ted ever and what's our verb? Traveled overseas. Has Ted ever traveled overseas? Yes, he has. He's traveled to several countries on business. He has traveled to several countries on business. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay, if you wanted to kind of review this where we were talking about have you ever, and then the answers kind of include never, go ahead and review this part because it's great. So have you ever met a famous person? Um, so ever in your lifetime from the time you were born to the present moment is how we're using that question. Ever in your life, okay, from the moment you were born until now, questions with ever frequently use the present perfect. So that's why they did this practice. It's great. And then when answering the questions with ever, the speaker often use, they often use never. Never is frequently used with the present perfect. So in the answer to this one, no, I've never met a famous person. I've never. So this is, I have never met dot, dot, dot. Okay. All right. Let's see, here's our last piece, and I would like for you to practice this, both of these pieces, um, with a partner, and then we are ending for today. So, um, what you're going to do, um, I'm going to say these sentences, and I want you to write the word in the line. And now, of course, because you do not have this paper in front of you, I am going to, you're going to just write on your paper, one through 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and you're going to put the word next to it. Okay. So I'm going to say it twice and then you're going to write it down. Okay. And I'm going to write it down so I remember, and then we can check in our next class. All right. You ready? So have you blank a two headed snake? Have you ever seen a two-headed snake? So write in here the word that you've seen or <laughs> the word that you heard. Have you ever seen a two-headed snake? Number two, have you ever ridden in a small plane? Have you ever ridden in a small plane? Write down the number two and then the answer that I said that's missing right here. Number three, have you ever driven a limousine? Have you ever driven a limousine? So we're just gonna kind of take this out because I wanna use different um, verbs here, so. Have you ever driven a limousine? Number four, have you ever done volunteer work? Have you ever done volunteer work?
Okay, number five, have you ever ripped a shirt? Have you ever ripped a shirt? Okay, number six, have you ever had a scary experience on an airplane? Have you ever had a scary experience on an airplane? All right, number seven, have you ever jumped out of a boat? Have you ever jumped out of a boat? Okay, number eight, have you ever felt so embarrassed that your face got hot? Have you ever felt so embarrassed that your face got hot? Number nine, have you ever met, um, have you ever, I'm making these up as I go, you know this. <laughs> have you ever spoken to a famous person? How about that? Have you ever spoken to a famous person? This word, if I, I can't say met here because there's, you don't say met to, right? So have you ever spoken to a famous person? Okay. Now, have you ever wanted to be famous? Have you ever wanted to be famous? Okay. So what I'd like for you to do is go back and listen to this. And if you have the list of the participles, make sure you go back and just check your spelling, okay, for all of those. And then I would like for you to answer these questions, okay? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. You can circle here, okay? All right. And I'll go over those in our next class, which is on June 6th. Okay, the last thing I would like for you to do here is um, create questions using the present perfect form of the given verb. So it says we've got the subject, we've got ever, and then the past participle. Um, we don't have the participle, we have the verb. So you're going to need to change this into the participle, okay? And then the rest of the sentence. So. For example, let's do a couple of these together and then I will have you do, let's see, we'll do maybe three together, okay? Have you ever cut your own hair? Have you ever cut, so the past part is, or the participle of the verb to cut is cut. Have you ever cut your own hair? Honestly, if you can get these participles accurate, you'd probably be more grammatically correct than most Americans, to be honest. Have you ever caught, that's the participle, it's just the normal past tense, a big fish? Okay, those are questions. And then the third one, have you ever taken care of an injured animal? So the verb here is, to take care of. This is one of those, it's a verb, we, and we have a lot of these in English, that is a verb that has, because take is its own verb, but to take care of is a different verb, right? Take is like, I'm going to take something from you and I keep it. To take care of is to care for something, right? You take care of your children or you take care of something precious to you or you take care of your animal, okay? So to take care of is the verb here. So have you ever taken care of an injured animal, okay? Now, I'd like for you to do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 on your own, and then we will review these in our next class. So make sure you stop the video right here and try to do the rest of those on your own. All right, and then I will see you all in class on June 6th. So let's see here. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here, and I will see you in our next class. Bye.